Now hey guys, welcome back to the channel and another Swiss 001 video. Now today we are of course back in the flight simulator and guess what plane we have got right in front of us, yes? This is the Boeing 737, but not any 737. This is uh, one of the 737 originals. Yep, this is the 737-200. 1965 was when it was launched. Yes, it's been quite a while and it's actually quite impressive because this plane is actually still flying around. There are 46 737-200s flying flying around passengers all across the planet, but that is a whole other story. I mean, you know, this machine is quite beautiful, especially with this vintage livery of Lutanza, you know, with the chrome livery. I mean, it also saves quite a lot of fuel. I mean, you know, having no paint on an aircraft also means that it's gonna be a lot lighter, you know, when it comes to weight, which also means that you're gonna save fuel here on these beautiful engines. I mean, just hear those out. I mean, these old 737-200 engines, they did look very special. I mean, it, that's kind of like how you can tell apart an older from a newer 737s. It's the engines. I mean, these are a lot thinner, as you can tell, especially comparing it with the new 737 engines. These are very small, but they deliver quite a lot of power, as we're going to find out now. There we go. Now, this is, as always, a very realistic model here for the flight simulator. I mean, even here from the outside, we can um, open and close the window blinds. By the way, during takeoff, gonna want to have those open but that's another story let's just go ahead and take off yeah i'll see here in the cockpit i mean quite a lot has changed here over the years but i still feel home you know coming back from something like a 737 max you know that's plane. it was very nice it's also been again very reliable and pretty safe as well actually this is really not a bad plane but it didn't have its uh flaws <laughs> very much actually which when i actually found out about them reminded me very heavily of the newer 737 max flaws that are going on right now so you know we've all heard about the recent 737 max news obviously there's been several crashes because the computer is flawed you know the mcas system basically the whole control unit sucks of the new 737 max and that was actually very similar with the 737 200 a few years back i mean honestly this plane had had a lot of flaws the only 737 series that didn't have a lot of flaws or at least hasn't are the newer ones the 737-800 the next generation it's that's what it's called i guess these haven't had any big flaws that actually caused crashes whereas the 737-200 had some let's actually just demonstrate that all right something that did actually happen twice was exactly this we're just gonna you know just imagine this here we're just flying around here and uh, suddenly there's a turn to the right a roll to the right perhaps as well and we're just spiraling down the ground we have no chance of recovering as you can tell we kind of do uh okay never mind there we go i mean we've come to stop now that's all good that was uh, quite a nosedive crash yeah again here we are just casually trying to land our 737 we're on final approach and suddenly we turn to the i don't know left that could work out as well and uh we did not really fight against the aircraft hard enough i guess which causes us to crash into the Mediterranean Sea. Now, this exact thing was actually something that happened twice. Yeah, two 737-200s crashed pretty much this way. And yeah, that whole problem thing started happening in the 1990s. Quite a long time after this plane's initial release, this issue started happening for some reason. It even happened quite low to the ground here on final. There we go. The plane suddenly rolls over and falls to the ground without the pilots obviously doing anything. Yeah, both of these cases actually happened on landing. Maybe let's perform an actual landing first, though. I kind of want to land this plane. Uh, I mean, just kidding. We're, of course, going to crash again. But let's actually take a look from the outside view to further see what was actually happening here with this plane there. There we go. Oh, we have a very much big turn to the right. And that was actually because, as you could see, the rudder was turning to the right. Maybe we can have a replay of this crash here. Oh, well, actually, yeah, we did have very excessive rudder input here. But I, as a pilot, did not initiate that input. It was the plane that did it for some reason. That is uh, very interesting indeed. Here's a pretty short runway, an especially narrow runway, Jesus Christ. Which is actually no problem for these 737s, especially the old ones. 
Um, they are very, very tough when it comes to landing somewhere. I mean, that's pretty much why they are still used in countries like Canada, because the old 737s could actually use gravel runways. All right, there we go. Now a landing, let's go ahead and stop, which shouldn't be that much of an issue either. This time around, the plane did not have a control thing issue. <laughs> that, that is all right. Now the similarity between the 737 MAX issues, or perhaps the crashes, and the 737-200 issues, actually very interesting. Both have a nosedive issue. Maybe the Max does not spiral like this one does, or at least did. There we go. But uh, yeah, the 737s, they are kind of flawed. I mean, they have, they have always been, right? Now, let's actually take a look at what exactly went wrong here with the old 737-200. What was the actual design flaw? And as you can already tell, it was in the rudder. It was not properly working. <laughs> Oh, that was not a very comfortable landing there at all. Now, the thing is, the rudder here had some issues with thermals. Yeah, uh, temperatures, right? <laughs> See, most of these accidents actually happened on final approach after the, uh, you know, the cruising flight. And that is because of one specific reason. Now, see, in that cruising flight, um, the servos of the rudder surface, they were obviously chilled because up there it's going to be really cold. You know, like minus 50 degrees Celsius is easily reached depending on what altitude you're in. The servos were cold, chilled when, you know, flying down to ground. Now, at around the time of landing for the aircraft, the plane experienced some turbulence, uh, which eventually caused rudder inputs from the pilot, which is a normal procedure. Uh, you know, as a pilot, you always work with a little bit of rudder here in midair, especially on the landing. Now, when you actually put inputs here into the rudder, then that means that uh, hot fluid enters the cold servos, which jams the whole thing, which then turned into an uncommanded movement of the aircraft's rudder, which in this case means it just turns excessively to the right or to the left. Now what also, as I've already mentioned, did happen was that the rudder could not move at all, but it did stay still at the idle position of the rudder, which meant that the pilots could still safely return back to the airport, which is actually quite a challenge as well. Um, rudder definitely is underrated. Let's see what happens if we actually do remove control input from the rudder. Let's go ahead. All right, now as you can see here, the rudder does not move at all, even if I do try to control it. So let's see how well the plane does actually still fly. All right, let's enter a turn here. I'll try coming in for a landing down here at Palma de Mallorca Airport and see how that works. All right, let's now level out and try getting this plane back to the airport and land it. Now, again, I do still see similarities to the 737 MAX issues. I mean, exactly like with the 200, it did take a lot of crashes for Boeing to finally actually notice what was wrong with the plane. I mean, you know, three incidents and two crashes were needed, just like pretty much the MAX, right? And you know, again, this uh, issues with the controlling of the aircraft. Both the MAX and the 200 didn't actually need to crash, but uh, after a while, the plane was obviously fixed and then set up to fly again. But obviously, just like the 737, this was a marketing failure for the 200, and that was actually quite a nice landing there. There we go. Uh, that marketing problem was not that big of an issue for the 737-200, actually, though, because, I mean, obviously, in the 1990s, the life of the 737-200 was pretty much almost over anyway. That is quite different to the MAX. I mean, the MAX, really, when it came out, it already started having issues. So, um, that's not with the 200. It did prove to be a pretty reliable plane over the years, didn't it? So, yeah, that is the 737-200 for you. Still a magnificent plane again in this livery. Very nice. And uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow as always. Good night.